always, these slides are in our newly published module. Um, so here's my definition of recursion. Try to make it relatively simpler. Recursion is solving a problem by using the solution to a simpler case of the same problem. Recursion is being lazy like a dragon, right? This is too hard a problem to solve. I am too lazy to try to solve the whole problem at once. So I'm gonna take a small step toward a solution and I'm gonna leave it to someone else to solve the rest of it, okay? That's the idea of recursion. In these stories of Martin and the Dragon, a couple requirements emerged that I wanna emphasize. Um, in order for a, rec a recursive algorithm to be successful, and you might remember from the very beginning of the school year when we first learned about algorithms, one thing that was a requirement of an algorithm is that it must terminate. It must end at some point. It's got to give us an answer. So in order for a recursive algorithm to be successful, there needs to be a terminating, claw, claw, ah, terminating case, something that causes the recursive algorithm to, to end. That could be an empty list, like in the first chapter of Martin and the Dragon. It could be the definition of zero factorial is one. That's a terminating case. It could be an empty loaf of bread and an empty loaf of bread has no slices. That's a terminating case. Um, so we always have to have a terminating case. If we leave that out, our recursive algorithm will recurse forever until like our program crashes, um, which, which is not a successful algorithm. In addition, when it comes to recursion, when we recurse, when like we have the next dream, um, the problem must be getting simpler, right? So in the case of a list of numbers, the, the second list had one fewer element than the first, that's a simpler problem. In the case of factorial, as we went from five factorial to four factorial, to three factorial, that problem is getting simpler. As we cut slices off the loaf of bread, that problem is getting simpler. If successive recursive calls aren't a simpler problem, then this is never going to end either, right? And we're going to have um, this infinite recursion, which isn't a successful algorithm. So we're going to explore these in example together in just a moment. But one more thing I want to point out at the beginning here is that we never have to write an algorithm recursively. There's no like class of problems that have to be solved recursively. We can always solve it iteratively. By that, I mean like with a for loop um, or mathematically in most cases. Um, in fact, the recursive solution may actually be a little bit slower, usually not enough to matter. So the reason why we think about things recursively and the reason why we use recursion as a problem solving strategy isn't because we have to, it isn't because it's faster. It's because once we get comfortable with the concept of recursion, it's actually conceptually easier to envision solutions recursively for certain types of problems than it is to do it iteratively. Okay. Um, the first example that we're going to do together today, I don't think is a great example where recursion is a good fit, but it's really simple, which is why we're starting with it. Um, but the example we'll do uh, next Wednesday. Is that the next time we're together after the test? Yeah, next Wednesday. Um, that is, I think, a good fit for, for recursion. So we're gonna work our way up to that. All right, let's open up BlueJ and we're gonna do a little example together, something simple. We are gonna create a new class in BlueJ called string reverse. There we go. And we're going to delete most of this template. And to keep this simple, we're just going to create a single static method. So we don't have to create a new string reverse object. We can just directly call the static method on the class. So we'll say public static. This will be our first recursive method. 
Recursive methods have to have, in general, have to have a non-void return type. This method is going to return a string. We're going to call it reverse. Um, recursive methods also, in general, have to take a parameter. So it's really important in order for this whole recursion thing to work, we got to have a parameter and we got to have a, a non-void return type. Our parameter is going to be a string. So what this reverse method does is it takes the string that is specified as a parameter. It reverses it such that it's backwards. The first character is last, the last character is first, and so on and so forth. And it returns that new reversed string. But we're going to write this in a recursive way um, as opposed to doing it in a, in a more traditional iterative approach. One of the things that showed up in all the chapters for Martin and the Dragon is the idea of a terminating case. Um, whether that's the, the empty list, the definition is zero factorial, or the empty loaf of bread. So we must have a terminating case. For this particular problem of reversing the string, or, or just in general, the terminating case is generally the easiest problem we can solve, right? Um, the easiest problem is for like which numbers are even would be, or which numbers are odd rather, would be an empty list of numbers. Um, the easiest loaf of bread to count the number of slices in is the empty loaf. It has no slices. The easiest factorial thing to calculate is zero factorial. It's defined as one. So what is the easiest string to reverse? What do we think? Absolutely, an empty string is the easiest string to reverse because there are no characters to reverse. So that's gonna be our terminating case. If the string is equal to the empty string, well, we're done. The reverse string of the empty string is just an empty string, just return it, we are finished. That is our terminating case. If the string is not an empty string, we want to be lazy like the dragon. We are not gonna reverse the entire string all at once. We're gonna take one small step toward a solution and we're gonna let someone else figure out the rest of the problem. One small step we could take would be to remove the first character from the string, let someone else reverse the rest of the string, and then after that's done, the first character that we removed, we could just put it at the end of the string. That's a small step. So let's, let's do that. Let's get the first character of the string. And I'm gonna use the substring method and we're gonna start at index zero and we're gonna go up to, but not including index one. That gets the first character in the string. Someone else is gonna deal with the rest of the string. So we'll create a variable for that. I'm going to use the substring method again, and I'm going to start at index one, and I'm not going to specify a second parameter. So it will go all the way to the end of the string. And whenever I say we're going to let someone else solve the rest of the problem, that's where we actually make the recursive call. So this is where we actually recurse. And what I mean by that is we're going to call this method, the very method we're in, the reverse method, we're going to call the same method with the simpler problem. We're not going to call the same method with the same problem because then we wouldn't be making progress. We would recurse forever. We wouldn't terminate. That's, that wouldn't work. But we are going to call the same method with a simpler version of the problem. Now, when we call the reverse method, we're in the reverse method. And when we call the method again, it's going to return a string. So we need to capture what the recursive method calls. So this will be the rest of string reversed is what's going to be returned when we call the reverse method again and pass the rest of the string as a parameter. Something that we frequently forget when we write recursive methods is we remember to recurse, we have this part of the code but we forget that the recursive method returns something that we need to store in a local variable and we leave out this part of the code. So, so don't do that. We, we need to know what's returned. Otherwise, it's like you ask someone else to solve the rest of the problem and you ignore their answer. 
right? So we don't want to do that. That'd be rude. We want to listen for their answer and remember it. Probably the biggest like mental hurdle to overcome when we're first learning about recursion here is being comfortable with the idea that we might not at this moment really understand how this is going to work, but we simply, because we haven't finished writing it yet, but we have to trust that it is going to work. And we have to trust that the string that's returned from calling reverse here and specifying the rest of the string truly worked. It's the rest of the string reversed. We just have to trust that that's the case so that we can finish our little part. Our little part is if someone else solved the rest of this problem, we just have to, to actually have the entire string reversed, we have to take the rest of string reversed that was returned and just concatenate on the end the first character and return that. And I, I appreciate that takes a little leap of faith, right? Like I would expect we're not quite sure why this works yet. But if we trust that however it works, it does work, then we can like finish writing the method to do our little step towards the solution. So try this out, um, run it, um, and type in a string in double quotes and see how, and I wanna connect this more to our story of Martin and the Dragon. So I'm gonna set a breakpoint here and I'm gonna run this. And I'm gonna specify a string of hello with an exclamation point. And I'm gonna make all this stuff fit on our screen, the debugger and our code. And we're gonna step through this together line by line to get a better sense of how recursion works. So the parameter is hello with an exclamation point. I'm gonna hit step. And it's not an empty string. So we're going to look at this code here. We're going to grab the first character. This is us taking a small step towards the solution. We're a lazy dragon. The first character is H. We're going to get the rest of the string, which is L-O. Um, and then we're going to recurse. We're going to call reverse again. We're going to pass the rest of the string as a parameter. And when I hit step into, we're going to notice a couple of things. We're now back up at the top of the reverse method. Our parameter value is now hello, not hello anymore. But I also want to show this part here. We probably haven't looked at this part of the debugger very much. It's labeled call sequence. Um, we often call it the call stack. The dragon referred to us piling up a stack of dreams. We're going to pile up a stack of method calls. Okay. Um, they actually use that word stack very intentionally here. Here is the reverse call that we're currently executing with a parameter of a low. I can click on the previous one and go back to where we left off here when we made the call to reverse. And we can see that it has a different parameter. So remember, parameters are unique to an invocation of a method. This parameter string has a value of hello. This is a different parameter string and it has a different value. And that's actually essential for how recursion works. If I step through this now, it's not an empty string. I'm gonna grab the first character, which is the E. I'm gonna grab the rest of the string, which is LLO exclamation point. We're gonna call reverse again. And when I do so, there are now three calls to reverse. The parameter value is now LLO exclamation point. It's not empty. We're just gonna take one small step towards the solution, grab the first character, it's an L. The rest of the string is LO exclamation point. We're not gonna solve anymore. We're gonna pass it off to someone else to solve the rest, so I'll step into it. Here's a simpler problem for someone else to solve. Just reverse LO exclamation point. We've now made four calls to reverse. Not empty, first string is an L, rest of the string is O exclamation point. We're making another call to reverse. We're up to a stack with five deep. Still not empty. First character is the O. The rest of the string is an exclamation point. We make another call to reverse. We now have six calls to reverse. 
each with a different value for the parameter string, getting simpler and simpler as we go. Substring here returns the exclamation point. The rest of the string is the empty string. We're gonna make the call to reverse. So we've got seven calls now, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now the string is the empty string. This is the easiest string to reverse. This is our terminating case. It is equal to the empty string. And so we're gonna return. This is an important part of recursion. Very often we do okay with the first steps that we've stepped through, but we forget about like this whole return part. When this method returns, we're gonna be back in the method that called reverse. We're gonna be back right here. And whatever is returned, we're gonna to assign to the local variable rest of string reversed. So when I hit step here, note that there's gonna be one fewer call to reverse here in our call stack. Sure enough, we're down to six calls to reverse. We're about to assign that value to rest of string reversed, but the reverse of the empty string, it's just the empty string, but that's okay. We're still gonna do our role. We're still gonna concatenate the first character at the end. And when we do that, the string reversed is just the exclamation point, and we're gonna return it. When we return from here, we're gonna be back at this call to reverse. So let's do that. We're back, we have one fewer call to reverse in our call stack. What gets assigned to this local variable rest of string reversed? The exclamation point, to which we concatenate the first character, which is O. And note that every local variable is also unique to the method call. In this call to reverse, first character is O. In this call to reverse, it's L, L, E, H, okay? So the variables, the local variables, the parameter variables are unique to the method call. So we'll put the, our first character at the end. So we have exclamation point O. We're gonna return again. We're down to four calls. The rest of string reversed has exclamation point O. We add on the L at the end. We return it, we're down to three calls. The rest of the string reversed, exclamation point OL. We add on another L, we return again, we're down to two calls. Rest of string reversed is exclamation point OLL. We add on the E and we return that string. We're back to our very first call to reverse. The rest of the string is almost complete. We have to add the H to the end, which we do and it returns hello backwards.